West Virginia won the toss and deferred, so Texas Tech will kick off. Uh, rather, will receive the kickoff from Corey Smith. Line drive kickoff with that stiff breeze behind him. Smith kicked it through the back of the end zone over the head of Sedale Foster. 18th career start for the senior. They open in the pistol with Kenny Williams, the running back. And Daggy on target with his first pass of the day to Eric Ward, their leading receiver. Jay Samaro, an excellent tight end. Williams. Wildcat formation now. Eric Stevens, a running back, in to take the direct snap. And he's ahead to the 38. They win a home conference game, as you saw. They lost six in a row. Big 12 games here. Daggy takes off running his longest run of the year to the 39 of West Virginia. Seth is a he's, he's a football player. I mean, he's hard nosed and he ran the ball today. About fell out when, when he ran the ball. And he made a couple first downs. And uh, it's it just good to see it. For two, two knee surgeries that Daggy had in high school, his junior and senior year. Missed his entire junior and senior years of high school. Do the surgery on each knee. And have committed as a sophomore to Texas Tech. They honored the commitment. And his pass is incomplete. Ruled an incomplete pass for Sedale Foster. And that is a break for Texas Tech. Roderick Jenkins, the corner, closed quickly for the Mountaineers. Well, if you're going to throw screen passes, you have to understand it's difficult to throw when you have corners that are aggressive. For once, you would like to see a team fake the screen and hit one deep if you're having aggressive corners attacking and Jenkins did a good job of coming up and breaking up the pass very close to being a catch might have been a break for Texas Tech now wide open the tight end tomorrow touchdown Jason Amaro. This is a mismatch. You have Amaro on snows, 240 pounds, not the fleetest of foot. It's just a good read by Deggy to hit Amaro in the end zone, recognizing mismatches and taking advantage of them. We welcome those of you who watched Iowa and Michigan State. We're in Lubbock, Texas. A quick score for the Red Raiders. They lead number five, West Virginia. First play from scrimmage for the Mountaineers is Tavon Austin. Led the country in all purpose yardage last year. Might do it again this year. First run from scrimmage is Andrew Bowie and he got banged down shy of the line of scrimmage. Bowie went in motion. Five man rush. Geno Smith got it off. It's caught for a short game by Stedman Bailey. Three out of 12 against Texas in the win in Austin Saturday night but they went five for five on fourth down. Only a three man rush. They still put pressure on and he got it off for a first down to Stedman Bailey to the 37 yard line of Texas Tech. Bowie nice hole West Virginia won that game 48 45 three man rush again dumped off for Austin flag down on the play Tavon out of bounds at the 30 offside defense number 54 second and two Bowie chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Kerry Hyder their outstanding defensive tackle. Five man rush. Smith got it off too high for Tavon Austin with the safety DJ Johnson in coverage. And now a decision for Holgerson, as we mentioned. Fourth down was a great down for the Mountaineers Saturday night in Austin. They went five for five against the Longhorns. Pistol for Geno Smith. Four man rush. They flush him. Throws in a single coverage incomplete. And Tenever Tavon Austin flagged down to the line of scrimmage. Good coverage by D.J. Johnson. Holding. Offense, number 76. Penalties decline. First down. Pat Egger, the right tackle. They believe they're a much improved team over the squad that went five and seven last year, particularly on defense. Alex Torres found in the middle. And he's out to the 47-yard line, a 16-yard gain. Offside defense number three lined up in the neutral zone. Penalties decline. Result of play is first down. Ooh, 
the juggling catch made on the pick throw to Darren Moore. He did well to hang on to it. Throw is a bit low. Flip to Jakeem Grant, one of the fastest players on the Red Raider team. He has a first down to the 42 yard line. Pistol now with Daggy. They do blitz. Daggy deep down the middle and broken up. Well defended by Pat Miller, who's intended for Eric Ward, their junior wide receiver. Defensive performance in that game. Daggy zips one, caught by Bradley Marquez at the 34 yard line, perhaps the 33. Third best in the country. A lot of ball faking. It's going to be a throw to a wide open receiver, and he threw it 10 yards over his head. All the faking worked as Bradley Marquez was in the clear, and Daggy missed him by a mile. Well, one reason why he missed him is because Marquez stopped his route. He thought Daggy was going to lob it to him and let him catch it, then run because he was so wide open, but he stops his route. Take a look right there. See Marquez stop and turn around for the football? You got to keep running your route and trust your quarterback to run the play like it's called. You never stop in the middle of a route when you're running a takeoff. Going for it on fourth and three. Daggy going to try to run for it, and he has the first down to the 30 yard line. Banged down by George Wright. They're going to move it back closer to that yellow line, but it is a first down for the Red Raiders. Yeah, he's become a productive player. At Texas Tech takes the check down to the running back Eric Stevens. And pulled down to the 25 yard line but that's a gain of about six. Diggy high throw. Third down and four. Diggy takes off running again. He's already run for two first downs today and now he has another. As they're going to mark him at the 20 yard line first down by about a yard. Again the decision making. Keep the chains moving watch number four Josh Francis come into your pitcher takes a poor angle. Daggy understanding where he is on the field just enough to get the chains moving and not take an unnecessary hit. So they might have gotten away with holding Kyle Rose number 93 for West Virginia look like he got pulled down to the ground on the rush. Daggy's pass batted down. Carl Joseph, the true freshman safety, saw that coming. Second and ten. There's Neil Brown, the offensive coordinator. He's 32 years old. Daggy throwing to the back corner of the end zone. It is caught as the inbounds. Touchdown, Eric Ward. Well, you know the replay folks are taking a look at it. Did he get one foot down? Yeah, it looks like he did. My left foot's down. That's the extra point. Texas Tech. With six minutes to go in the first quarter. Now leads fifth ranked and undefeated West Virginia 14 to nothing. So Kramer Fife kicking off into that stiff breeze. The deep men for West Virginia are only around the 10 yard line. Likely to be some sort of squib. A very short squib. And West Virginia is going to have great field position beyond the 45 yard line. Daggy to Ward of 19 yards. J.D. Woods picking his way out to midfield. Good catch on a ball thrown behind Stedman Bailey. Andrew Bowie first down West Virginia. Red Raiders two possessions two touchdowns leading number five West Virginia 14 nothing. But here come the Mountaineers deep pass to Tavon Austin. And he's inside the two tackled by D.J. Johnson a gorgeous throw by Geno Smith. If you don't jam them they're just going to run straight down the field and it's pitch and catch watch Tavon Austin right here number one is going to run right down the field with nobody disrupting the route. You're asking the safety to come over to help you but that's too far to cover as they came back up quickly but perhaps too quickly flag to negate the snap. Prior to the snap. 
False start. Offense, number 77. Bowie, the running back. They fake it to him, and it's a touchdown. Stedman Bailey apparently had it long enough with Eugene Nebo draped on him, and West Virginia strikes quickly. Well, they love to get Stedman Bailey alone by himself. Tavon Austin draws the defenders, and they run to the back of the end zone. And Geno Smith shows you that he can make the tough throw in coverage. Nice route by Stedman Bailey going up and getting his highest point and has very strong hands to finish. 30th career touchdown reception for Stedman Bailey adding to his West Virginia school record. And the extra point up and good by Tyler Bittenkirk. 39 yard TD to Amaro 19 to Ward. Two touchdown throws by Dagey. Looking to fire on first down, another wide open receiver. Alex Torres again. Inside the 40 of West Virginia, Torres working his way back after knee surgery at the end of last season. 30 yard gain. Here's the problem Carl Joseph has to run with it. That's called the wheel route. And the problem is they cover just areas on the field. You have to jump people and play man to man through your zones. That's the only way they're going to get better in their pass coverage. Daggy couldn't find a receiver that time throws on the run and it's broken up by Pat Miller intended for Darren Moore. Daggy's already thrown for 137 yards and two touchdowns in the first quarter. Offensive pass interference number 18 the ball was completed beyond the line of scrimmage and the player was blocking beyond the line of scrimmage 15 yard penalty. Second down. Second down and 25. Texas Tech back at its own 45 yard line. Daigie, a bullet. Caught at the 34. Amaro again. <laughs> the 21 yard gain made it a very manageable third down, but they didn't get it. Third down and four. And that's, a, that's a problem. Four man rush. Deep drop by Daigie. And it's caught for a first down by Darren Moore. They convert on fourth and five. Daggy's going to throw it for the 18th time in the quarter, and it is intercepted on the deflection off the hands of Alex Torres and picked off by Carl Joseph. First career interception for the true freshman from Orlando, Florida. Well, this is on right there, Torres, who has the ball. You got to make that catch and a good job of Joseph of playing it all the way through the play. Big play for the Mountaineer defense, one they needed. West Virginia number five in the AP poll, number four in the coaches poll. They moved up three spots in both polls after their win in Austin last week. Down 14 to seven here in Lubbock. But with it first and ten after the interception and the screen gets nothing. Andrew Bowie stopped for loss of a yard by Cody Davis, the senior safety from Stephenville, Texas. Trained eye would look like his left foot's actually back quite a bit, isn't it? That no, is not. Bowie spins, got plastered to the end of the run by DJ Johnson. Right you are. Bowie hit behind the line, managed to stagger forward. And the equivalent really of a run, and Tavon Austin got banged out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. Cody Davis made the tackle. This league third down and six for Geno Smith and the Mountaineers. He's pushed back, gets it off, incomplete. Second and five, Texas Tech. Daggy back of the end zone. Touchdown, Marcus Kennard. It's hard to be at your usual numbers when you average 400 yards per game passing and he's going to try to add to that total with a deep ball for the freshman Jordan Thompson who's become a pretty good cover corner. Brian Clark went in motion three man rush on third and nine Smith fires and it is caught. Terrific diving catch by Tavon Austin. Austin the leading receiver in the nation receptions per game 11 and a half. Smith throws Bailey the intended target it's over his head and out of bounds with Eugene Nebo in coverage. 
On second and ten, inside handoff to Andrew Bowie. Texas Tech can make an adjustment off of that. Third and eleven. They rushed five. Smith stepped up and has another first down to Stedman Bailey. Fifth catch of the day for Bailey and Smith on target again to the 24 yard line to Jordan Thompson. Run. And Bowie got belted after a one yard gain by Trey Porter. Play action pass for Geno Smith. All data fling it in the direction of J.D. Woods. Smith throw short of the first down. It's caught by J.D. Woods, who's their number three wide receiver. They blitz. And he's in trouble. Flag down. Smith. You know, we moved up and down the field. Uh, we got in the red zone and just stopped and stalled. You know? they, 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 they made plays and we didn't. Well, I, don't know. I don't really know any other way to say it. Well, the pit. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense, number 13. Penalties declined. First down. You've shown a pretty <laughs> good appetite week after week, especially when we're buying. Seth Beggy. Short throw, Jason Morrow. Here he goes. He's the tight end. Look at him run. All the way down near the 20 yard line. Darwin Cook saved the touchdown. 62 yards to Amaro. It's all about decision making. Right here, you think Daggy would take off and run, but he's trusting his big fella to get the ball into the hands of the talent and let them do their work. And Amaro produces. Longest pass play of the year for the Red Raiders. At the Mountaineer, 21. Little bubble screen to the right. Darren Moore through the traffic. The pass. Second and five, Texas Tech. Daggy back of the end zone. Touchdown. Marcus Kennard. Take a look at Pat Miller's head and eyes. They're looking inside at the quarterback. He does not have his eyes on Kennard, and Kennard's pushing him up the field. Pat Miller does not get out of his back pedal. No contact, no disruption of the route, and it's an easy pitch and catch. And just throw it to the back pylon and let your guy do your work. But it's all about the eye shot. You have to be aware if somebody's barreling down you full speed, you got to get your eyes on him and get out of your back pedal, or you'll get burned every time. Already over 2,000 yards for the season in this game six of the year. Throws short to Tavon Austin. Fancy footwork. Got away from Terrence Bullock for a moment. Stepped out of the pistol. He wants a deep throw, single coverage, and it's incomplete. Still haven't trailed in a game this season. Third and six. Smith caught first down with the forward progress. Andrew Bowie. Fake to Bowie. Smith with time, low throw, incomplete. Here comes a blitz. Smith got it off and 10 and for J.D. Woods. He wants a flag and they're going to throw one. Pass interference. Defense. Number 24. Penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. The toss to Austin. A little stutter step move. Geno Smith incomplete. Well defended by Eugene Nebo. Austin the intended target again. One was scored by Oklahoma. But they are clearly a lot better defensive team. Smith sets up a screen. Bowie taken down at the line of scrimmage. Cody Davis. We mentioned earlier the defense is improved and he is improved with the tutelage of Art Kaufman, the new defensive coordinator, and John Lovett, an outstanding secondary coach who's in his first year here. There's Art Kaufman in the middle of the screen. Tyler Bittenkurt to punt. Line drive kick. Austin Juzalik a fair catch. Geno Smith held in check so far today by the Red Raider defense.
When Robert Griffin playing in a similar system or Geno Smith does it, they're not system quarterbacks. I think what they realize there's a lot of really good quarterbacks playing in this system. Kenny Williams takes the little dump pass, lunges. Seth Dagey dumps it short. Kenny Williams. Wow, stays on his feet. Are they going to give him that extra yard or two? Doesn't appear that they will. They'll mark him down at his own 49 yard line with a 24 yard pick. Dagey goes quickly to the sideline of Darren Moore. Watch the Troy games and like what he saw from Brown's offense. And there's another bullet fired by Dagey. And another first down to Darren Moore, the senior from Irving, Texas. Passing offense similar to what Mike Leach ran here with great success while he was the head coach. Williams breaks more tackles and powers inside the 10 yard line. To him again. 16 yard gain. They sling it out to Eric Ward. He twists inside the five with 364 yards of offense on this maligned West Virginia defense. Dale Foster in motion. Blitz from West Virginia. Davey has plenty of time and throws another touchdown. This one to Darren Moore. He's playing man to man coverage. Ricky Rump, number 41. Freshman, don't give up the inside. You use the sideline for your help. Darren Moore will set him outside. Ricky jumps outside. Just easy pitch and catch. They're readjusting. They're constantly readjusting on the offense. Let's see what they have. Could really use a score here. Smith throws short, incomplete. Stedman Bailey couldn't hang on to it. Screen nicely set up, and Bailey races out to the 38 yard line. Bowie. Four man rush. Smith deep ball off the hands of J.D. Woods and incomplete. It'll be third down at eight. Here's a big third down. They don't get it here. Perhaps give the ball back to the Red Raiders with a chance to do more damage before the half. Only a three man rush. Geno Smith way too high. Ten for Tavon Austin. And Texas Tech is staying disciplined in what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. Flag down before the snap. False start against the Red Raiders. False start. Offense number 65. There's been a drop off in town. Diggy fires with confidence through the hands of Jace Amaro. He has no fear. Uh, he got he got hit in the ribs. They're X-raying him as we speak. Hopefully, uh, it, it's not anything serious. He came back and played. Uh, threw up the entire halftime. He just he's a football player. Power. Tommy Tuberville comes in five and seven in his second year last year after an eight-win first season. Here's Jakeem Grant out of bounds. Yep. Used to Neil Brown brought him in to keep the passing game the one to add the running game and the running game works very well. So Dale Foster may go touchdown Texas Tech. He, he keeps getting it done you know he's he's not very big but he's got great vision and in a game like that where you just you know the they know that we're going to pretty much every time he ran it, they knew that we we're going to give it to him when he started playing. And they had five or six in the box, and he just keeps making plays. And that the one right before the half, uh, we ran a, a new little power play that that, uh, that Neil had put in. And uh, the offensive coaches did a great job on the running game. They did a great job on all of it, but the running game uh, really, really kept kept them offset. That play with Sadell was huge, but it just – Offensive staff just did a, a superior job of taking their time, not losing their patience. And this is speed and athleticism. And you see right here, Sadale Foster, really not talked about a lot, but every time he gets an opportunity, the past two weeks we've been here, he's produced. And this time he's a big production. Well, a little guy, 5'7". Raymond Fife kicks off. Returnable for Tavon Austin. <laughs> Ball 
and is out of bounds at the 50. So perhaps a chance to set up a score for West Virginia or kick it out of bounds. And Austin set the tone last week in Austin Texas with two long kickoff returns in the first quarter over the middle the catch is made by J.D. Woods. Geno Smith pushed back pressure from Dartuan Bush deep throw incomplete 10 seconds to go in the half not in field goal range here good catch by Jordan Thompson they're going to give him out of bounds at the 32 yard line to stop the clock with four seconds left he had one blocked last week at Texas by Alex Okafor 49 yard try it would be his career long into a stiff breeze. Another timeout by West Virginia. Well, now Texas Tech's going to call a timeout. <laughs> so the good news is that's the last timeout for either team. I fake your fake, your fake. And now they take the field goal unit off and bring back out Geno Smith. I like this move by Coach Holverson. Gives them a chance. Three receivers to the right. They'll set up for a Hail Mary. Smith. Now what will be the last play of the half? Locks it up and it's incomplete. Batted down by DJ Johnson, who's an excellent safety. He's been off target a little bit. Unusual for him. Seth Deggie, as he mentioned, grew up in this part of the world. He's used to throwing in the winds of the South Plains. Dumped off for Tavon Austin, 56% of the first half. Out of the power pistol, Andrew Bowie banged down at the 31 yard line. Play action fake. Smith takes off and runs. It'll be very close. They're going to mark him out of the 34, a yard short of the first down. First run of the day. No hesitation from Dana Holgerson. He's going to go for it on fourth and one. In the opening minute of the third quarter, down by 28 on his own 34 yard line. I like the call. I really do. Geno Smith slides ahead for the first down. Bowie following the block of Ryan Clark breaks free. Clark leading the way. Same look. Perhaps the same play. Bowie. Same formation they run the other way and it's Ryan Clark who had been in the witness protection program as far as ball carrying is concerned. Here comes a blitz. Here comes a deep pass. Intended for Ivan McCartney. Deggie's used to throwing in this weather. A little trickeration. Austin flipped it back to Jordan Thompson. Coach for both of them. Third down and seven. And the throw incomplete off the hands of Ivan McCarty. Another Texas Tech blitz. Smith had time, throws incomplete. Looking for McCartney, who's become a frequent target here. The opening possession of the second half, which is over now as Texas Tech takes it back on down. First possession of the second half for Texas Tech, leading 35 to 7. Seth Dagey on target again. Strike to Tyson Williams. One play and they're already deep into West Virginia territory at the 28 yard line. His best half ever. Jakeem Grant. Out of bounds. Second and six. Daigie throws intercepted. Picked off by Broderick Jenkins. There is a flag down on the play. I think they're going to get offside, Sean, on West Virginia. Offside. Defense, number four, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Second down. Huge break for Texas Tech. And now Kenny Williams. Down to the 11, the ball comes out. Well, one play after an interception was nullified. The fumble goes over to West Virginia. That's a big play right here. You see Kenny Williams and 
The ball is definitely out before he's down. Now you have to do something with the turnovers. Knocked up by Isaiah Bruce, recovered by Ricky Rump. Same formation that they showed a lot in their first possession of this half. Tavon Austin, we saw a lot of Ivan McCartney, a backup on the last series. Deep throw by Geno Smith, and J.D. Woods couldn't hang on. He had a chance to make a big play. Bowie, first down and nearly ran away. Good leg tackle by Terrence Bullitt. Bowie again. Four yard gain to the 29. Geno Smith, deep throw, looking for Austin, and broke it up by Eugene Nebo. They want pass interference on the West Virginia sideline. Back to the pistol and a draw and very little. Three man rush. Smith fires way over the head of Tavon Austin. And West Virginia turns it over on downs again. His Red Raiders lead 35 to 7 nearly midway through the third quarter. Eric Stevens, the interaction he had with Tuberville there after the fumble, if Tommy was trying to encourage him to keep his spirits up or was giving him a hard time, throw to the back of the end zone, incomplete. Go to school in one place. She finished high school in Stillwater, Oklahoma. First field goal try of the day for Ryan Buston, 42 yarder, no good. Way off to the left. And you know the kickers don't like this dusty breeze either. Once again, I'm going to go back. There has to be some type of urgency or hurry up. You're down 28 with this offense. Geno Smith, play action pass. Steps into a deep ball and over the head of J.D. Woods. Well, they've been playing without Stedman Bailey. Here's Quint Kesnick. He has been a spectator throughout this second half, hobbling around on the sideline. No helmet on, appears to be an ankle injury. Trying to keep himself loose, but it appears like his day might be done, and that is a huge hurt to this West Virginia offense. Hard to focus defensively on one of them when they're both out there. Bowie wrestled down from behind by Cody Davis. Management Information Systems. Fumble! And it looks like Geno Smith got it back. Andrew Bowie separated from the ball. And the Mountaineers got it back. Looks like big number here. 91. Kerry Hyder. The guy just makes plays from his inside his tackle position. And again, forcing the hand of West Virginia to call on the punt team again. Bittencourt. About to punt for the fourth time. Into the breeze, Austin Zuzalik back for it for Texas Tech. Good punt. Their catch signaled and made at the 31 yard line. They lead by 28, trying to hand West Virginia its first loss as a member of the Big 12. Jay Samaro up the near sideline and down at the Mountaineer 42. Daggy pulls it down. Sedale Foster cuts inside. Good decision. First down, 29 yard line. Fake and a throw and a catch and a touchdown. Darren Moore. Uh, how about how about a quarterback? I mean, they, they come out, they saw that. He'd been getting pressure the last couple of weeks. Uh, we worked hard on, on keeping him off of him, giving him one extra second to throw the football, and he absolutely played perfect. Uh, he was, it, it was fun to watch. See that area? That's wide open. You have no safety help, so the last thing you don't want to do is give up the inside. You give up the inside. You give up the post. And Darren Moore, big, tall target, makes you pay. His second touchdown of the game, fifth touchdown pass for Seth Dagey. 29 yarder. Ryan Buston has the extra point. 
Javon Austin finds a seam. As a first down, shoved out by Cody Davis at the 42 yard line. About as good a college football player as you can be. Smith, a little off balance as he throws. Is he in bounds? No. Trey Porter caught it. It was out of bounds. No interception. It was thrown at Jordan Thompson. Justin Garrison powers his way across midfield. He'll mark him right down to the 50, about a yard and a half short of a first down. Garrison again, first down. Obviously, they're going to take a hit should they lose. You wonder about Geno Smith's Heisman candidacy. Unless they drastically get better on defense. Good catch on a ball thrown behind. Tavares Copeland, true freshman with his first career catch. He's out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Nice catch. Yeah. And that's the St Stedman Bailey position. That's the one receiver away from the three receiver side, holding their tendency certain down. This is a run. Copeland's been good in practice. Here's Garrison. Leaving even when defenders were near him. <laughs> and he got to the 20 yard line. All kinds of work to do. Down by 35. Smith throws good catch not an injury they'll keep him out of the lineup in upcoming games Garrison they run it with Bowie first down and again are you still doing that off the yeah. stance of the left tackle absolutely and I'm looking at his stance and also his head if you take a look at him his head always looks inside when he runs and looking outside at the guy he has to pass protect when it's a pass it's a clear giveaway it's one that trained eyes always pick up fourth quarter about to begin West Virginia number five number four in the coaches poll five and oh but down by thirty five first and goal just inside the ten. They stick with the run. Andrew Bowie got flattened by Cody Davis. Those open field tackles in space. Bowie again. Play action pass. Geno Smith incomplete. Smith chased out of the pocket. Throws on the run and it's broken up. Batted down by Bruce Jones with the pressure coming from Jackson Richards. If I'm Dana Holgerson, I'm going to talk about Gino. You got to start looking to run the football. Now watch him out in space right here, Sean. He's getting chased. Now he has the edge. Look at this. He has the edge. And this comes a point in time where you got to use your ability, especially if there's nobody to throw to, to get up there and either put your head down. The guy covered with two guys. 15 play drive comes up empty. West Virginia still has not scored in the second half. Daigie throwing out of his end zone. So Tommy Tuberville wasn't lying when he said he was going to keep the pedal to the metal. Nice catch by Marcus Kennard. Jakeem Grant turns the corner. And the pinball down near the 27. Carl Joseph, the primary tackler for West Virginia. And if you can't do that, you have to try to find other things. Eric Stevens got the first down, and he got his teeth rattled. Diggy's going to keep slinging it. Jay Samaro taken out of bounds. Nick Florence of Baylor threw for 561 against the Mountaineers, and that's 70 to 63 West Virginia win. Eric Stevens has another first down. Stick with the ground. Not going to be a happy look at that for play Dana right Holderson there. Look, today. <laughs> look at that play. Yes. Fidel Foster. Keep the high-powered passing game. But add the run and improve the defense and care about defense. Right down the seam, Austin Zuzalik the catch. Covered the deep stuff. Or covered the deep stuff. 
Aaron Moore, the second of five straight games against ranked teams, starting with Oklahoma last week. 11 play of the drive. March 76 yards already. Mentioned a lot of people here locally understand and believe in what Tommy Tuberville is doing, but at a certain point you want to come to the game and see a win against the conference team. So we're going to see a big win here. <laughs> to rip off his clothes, it's amazing <laughs> how the speed picked up. Daigie goes wide as a receiver. Now they're having fun, the Red Raiders. And Eric Stevens runs for a first down. 14th play of the drive. Delay to Sedale Foster. And he is swung down. He doesn't play here in the second half. West Virginia has not scored in the half. Diggy throws for Darren Moore. Touchdown. Great blocking by Alex Torres. Talked earlier about how these Red Raider wide receivers really participate in the blocking on the perimeter. And Torres gave Moore all kinds of help as Darren scores his third touchdown of the game. Apparently, Coach Tuberville said it's the uh, not the Red Raiders' job to stop the Red Raiders. It's the Mountaineers' job. He's going to run his offense. Ryan Buston kicks the extra point. 98-yard touchdown drive, and now 658 yards of offense for Texas Tech. Fifty seven thousand three hundred and twenty eight here on homecoming just shy of a complete sellout. Stadium holds just over sixty thousand. Geno Smith throws J.D. Woods the catch. Down at the forty five yard line. Here's Quint Kesnick. You guys take a look at Midnight Matador 13 year old Gelding the mascot here at school last week uh, injured a leg while running out. They tell me he's week to week right now. He needs some rest needs to get sound if they're going to use him to run out at the beginning of the games. But he certainly can show up to games and walk around the outside of the field as, as he has done all afternoon during homecoming. I asked Sam Jackson, the head of the mascot program, if they're looking for a replacement. He said, no, at the end of the year, we'll have to reevaluate that. In the weight room, Matador. Not listed on the injury report. <laughs> We're told when uh, they selected this horse 10 years ago, Midnight Matador, uh, that they actually tried out 26 different horses. They rode 26 different horses before wow. they settled on. Midnight Matador. So it's a big deal around here. Ashley Wenzel is the fast rider. Dustin Garrison dropped for a loss. Garrison breaks tackles. And gets taken down at the 27. Texas Tech picked ninth in the Big 12 preseason poll. JD Woods, nice catch. Inbounds, then out with possession at the seven yard line. They're, they're pretty balanced. I mean, they actually are somebody in the Big 12 that plays pretty solid defense. Particularly today. Geno Smith throws incomplete. Garrison fighting for every inch. Gets pulled back. He was no longer a Longhorn fan. They're passionate about their football. A touchdown for Garrison. So West Virginia has its first score since the first quarter with 2.41 to go. Nine play, 73 yard drive. And Garrison scores his first touchdown of the year. It's good to see Dustin Garrison back in there. And, and I think if you're, you're Coach Holverson right there, you know, you're pleased because right there, your offense showing that they weren't giving up and they were able to drive the football down and at least get some points on the board. Extra point is good from Tyler Bittenkirk. Well, they were number 24 in the coaches' poll. They weren't ranked last week in the AP poll. They fell out of the coaches' poll after they had lost to Oklahoma. It'd be interesting to see if they slide back into the top 25. 33 was the final. Michael Brewer is in a quarterback. He comes out slinging. Brewer led them to a touchdown drive late last week when the outcome was no longer in doubt. That's why some people were asking locally, should he be the quarterback? Tommy Tuberville was 
very clear. Sedale Foster carries. Stedman Bailey limping to the locker room. Broderick Jenkins walking off the field. Still a minute and 40 to go. Bruce is following him. I, I don't understand that unless they're injured and they're going in to get started on early treatment. I can think of that as the only reason, the only acceptable reason for leaving the sidelines early. There's a reason why Tommy Tuberville has won now 128 games, the college football head coach. And I think those who want to kind of put the whole Mike Leach thing behind them and get on board with this regime have a reason to be fully on board after this performance. We're going to give Tubbs the tub. Well, I understand that. And well, I think it's a game, you know, I don't know if you want to go this kind of celebration this early in the season. I just set the standard. And I understand it. I, and it's just the all businessman in me on this. Oh, you're just such a grinch. I oh. am. I know. I'm grumpy, aren't I? Well, they've tried a couple of times. They've been <laughs> thwarted. The chain gang looked like they gave Tuberville a temporary reprieve. <laughs> Eric Stevens, the ball carrier. Oh, they got him now. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he loves it. He's the same. Win or lose, he's the same. You know, we travel around the country, talk to a lot of coaches. We don't care who wins or loses. But there are certain guys you enjoy talking to, and Tommy Tuberville's one of them, because he really is the same all the time. And this is a huge win for him. 676 yards of offense. Just 24 less than the most West Virginia's ever given up in a game. They gave up 700 in the win over Baylor. And the homecoming crowd storms the field here to celebrate another win over a top five team led by Tommy Tuberville. As we mentioned earlier, he's had a history of knocking off teams in the top five. Seth Daggy, 32 of 42 for 499. And six touchdowns. Coach, you look up on the scoreboard, West Virginia up 14 points. How'd your defense do it? Well, we tackled. I mean, you got to tackle these guys in open space. I was proud. We didn't get any deep balls for a touchdown, and we tackled in open space. How do you best describe the play of your quarterback, Seth Dagey? Well, he had a great day. You know, he's, he's had a pretty good year. He had a couple of bad games the last couple of weeks, but he had time to throw today. We picked up the blitz. They tried to blitz him, but he held in there and threw the ball and put it on time. How do you characterize this scene and this win? Well, well, it's, you know, it's fun. You know, it's, it's one game for us, but it's good to see our crowd enthused. It's been hard, you know. We, we've been underdogs the last couple of weeks. Last week we didn't play as good as we could. We found out how good how good Oklahoma is. But West Virginia's got a good team, but we weren't going to let them beat us on a deep ball, and we're going to play underneath with our offense. Congratulations, Coach. Thank Guns you. up and love it. Thank you.